Welcome, ladies and gents. Chris Andre here. You can find me at Bet Boxing on Twitter. Of course, you can subscribe to the channel. Let's talk boxing. Let's talk about the weigh-in. Alexander Usyk and Anthony Joshua came in at quite surprising weights, in my opinion. Usyk came in at 221 and a half pounds, just 0.25 of a pound heavier than the last fight. Now, he had been looking a lot more bulked to me in recent weeks. Uh, over the last couple of weeks, I felt that he looked bigger and part of his team put out a Instagram story to say that he was 106 kilograms. So it looked like he was going to come in around the 230s. Now, Hatman has always said, of course, that you have to be very careful when it comes to these photographs, these videos, angles play a part and things like that. Look at Andy Ruiz. Well, Hatman was right. I was wrong. It's very possible. I guess that Usyk was heavier and he's come down in weight over the last week or whatever. But it's also very possible that this was just mind games and that he was never that bulky to begin with. And they just wanted people to think that way. Nonetheless, I also felt that Anthony Joshua looked trimmer than he's ever looked really, or certainly in recent times. And actually, he's come in heavier than the first fight, 244 and a half pounds, four and a half pounds heavier than last time, almost half a stone, not quite. Now, for men that size, of course, that's nothing too over the top. But he's coming in roughly half a pound heavier than his display against Charles Martin. And Anthony Joshua does look like he's in tremendous condition. So does Alexander Usyk. It's a career heaviest, like I said, but it's not what we expected it to be. Now, one of the things I found interesting is that a couple of hours ago, an interview went up online where Robert Garcia was talking about Anthony Joshua. And he was saying how... One of the things that they were disagreeing on a little bit was how much he was pushing AJ. And Anthony Joshua was complaining to one or two close confidants in there saying, I think they're pushing me too hard. And Robert Garcia was saying, no, no, trust us. It's all going to pay off in the end. Now, he looks terrific, but you have to ask yourself, Robert Garcia doesn't have experience with heavyweights. Is it possible that he's pushed him too far? Is it possible that he's worked so hard? that he's left something in the ring. It is possible to overtrain. I'm not saying that is the case. I'm sure they've looked at his numbers extensively and very, very closely, and it could very well be that he's worked so hard and will come in peak condition, tip-top condition. But is it possible that that lack of experience could have somehow caused an issue here? Let me know what you think about that. In terms of something else Hatman mentioned, he was talking about it with Outmatch uh, boxing shout out to those two guys the boxing brotherhood shout out to the boxing brotherhood hatman was referring to the fact that anthony joshua's haircut his trim is actually similar to what it was for the first dillian white fight now at face value a lot of people might think well this is trying too hard and so on and so forth he's obviously trying to channel that old school aj the one that still had the eye of the tiger, the aggressive Anthony Joshua, the one that wanted to take your head off before he wanted to introduce some fluidity to his game and become more of a boxer. Eddie Hearn recently was saying how uh, Anthony Joshua had felt that after the Klitschko fight, that he knew that in order to achieve longevity in the sport, he couldn't afford to be taking the sort of shots that he was taking in order to give off his own shots. So he made a conscious effort to become more of a boxer. Maybe Anthony Joshua is now saying, right, forget all that, scrap all that. It's horses for courses. You've got to look at guys like Lennox Lewis who knew when to box like the big man and when to box off the back foot. I've got to become a beast now. And by getting the same haircut, by starting to think the way he used to think, dress the way he used to dress. This is something that Outmatch was saying, how he's wearing more colorful attire that is, is more in line, more solid colors that is more in line with what he used to wear. Perhaps that that is a method of channeling that old Anthony Joshua. This is not unique to Anthony Joshua. If you look at Alexander Rusik in his last fight, he had a shaved head. This was the one against Anthony Joshua. More recently, he's got that little quiff on the top of his head, the, the ponytail that seems to fall rather than a tail around the top of his head. And this actually harks back to the old Alexander Usyk, the Usyk that pays homage to his Cossack ancestry. It was a Cossack warrior haircut. So they both seem to be channeling something of the past. In fact, even with Alexander Usyk, it extends to his attire. In the last fight with Anthony Joshua, you saw him come in dressed like the Joker from Batman. Well, if you look at the first photo here, the middle photo is obviously the last fight. On the, all the way to the right, you've got the Joker. On the left of your screen, you've got what he was wearing today. One pink sock and one yellow sock with red baggy trousers and a white shirt, loose shirt with a trim, a patterned trim through the center and on the sleeves and on the collar. 
it's almost like a jester. So whilst going old school, they both seem to have gone old school with their haircuts, Alexander Usyk's also adding a little bit of a Joker-esque tidbit in there. He's telling Anthony Joshua, perhaps, yeah, I'm here, I'm a warrior. I'm harking back to all, the, all of that. However, do you remember the Joker that turned up and toyed with you in the ring in the first fight? He's still here, the one with the pink sock and the yellow sock and the big jester who doesn't feel any pressure. The one who you tried to stare down at the press conference the other day and the moment you turned away, I began to sing a Ukrainian folk song. I wasn't bothered by you, Anthony. I'm a jester, I'm a joker, I'm a supervillain. They've put you up, they've built you up. You're this corporate superhero. You're Bruce Wayne. Well, I'm the Joker. Maybe that's what Alexander Usyk is trying to convey to Anthony Joshua here. But ultimately, they're both harking back to something, aren't they? But to show you that it goes beyond just the external attire and that I'm not overanalyzing here and that Anthony Joshua is genuinely concerned about these sorts of things, I want you to consider some of the things he spoke about when he was trying on the gloves. Listen to this clip for a moment. The black ones are, the black ones are. Think so. I thought the red ones give us that like uh, the 80s era. I'm trying to say. Remember the 80s era, innit? When, what, remember when everyone had the same gloves? Yeah, yeah. no logo or stuff like that. Normally, oh, we're here to impress. We're here to do a lot of job. I want you to consider what's gone on there. He's picked some Grant gloves rather than the rivals that he picked in the last fight, but he's gone for the black ones, and the reason he gave is that they've got more room. In other words, they're more comfortable. He feels more comfortable in that glove. But somebody who I think is from the commission turned and said to him, the black ones also look better on TV. And Anthony Joshua said, you reckon? And then he refers to the 1980s, that the red ones remind him of that era. They scream the era of the 1980s. And do you remember when everyone used to wear the same gloves? Now, in the past, I've heard Anthony Joshua talk about wearing black shorts. And he said, yeah, like Mike Tyson, black shorts, no nonsense. In other words, what is he doing here? He's very much aware of the imagery and how he gets himself into a certain zone, so to speak, by addressing certain elements when it comes to the imagery. Perhaps that's why in certain periods of his career he wanted to be ultra-muscular, because of what that would convey as an image. The more muscular I am, the better shape I'm in, the more intimidating I'm going to be, maybe that's how he saw it. I'm more powerful, I'm like a 1980s superhero, I'm Sylvester Stallone, I'm Arnold Schwarzenegger, all rolled into one. Maybe that's how he saw it. I'm Hercules. Well, here, you can hear him finish up by saying, ultimately, we aren't here to impress. We're here to do a mother effing job. Well, the point is here that he's not obviously giving in to the imagery. He's not putting it above all else. He's not putting it on a pedestal ahead of his tactical choices or ahead of comfort or anything like that. Nonetheless, it shows that it's something he's aware of, something that he goes through to get into the zone. Now, is this all a bunch of shallow hocus pocus with nothing to it or psychologically is there something that could be beneficial for Anthony Joshua and indeed Alexander Rusik who do seem to hark back to the past in order to get into the zone well one thing I want to refer you to is method acting you know when you look at certain actors they get into a zone and they will add prosthetics or they will dress a certain way or they will go through certain extreme behaviors in order to become the character that they want to convey Jamie Foxx, for instance, when he was going to play Ray, Ray Charles, who was a blind musician, Jamie Foxx would glue his eyelids shut for 14 hours a day. Think about that. He knew that if he had to be Ray F Charles, he had to feel as though he lived in darkness, just like Ray Charles, and he had to look a certain way and move a certain way, and he would study what he would wear and how he would move, the little idiosyncrasies, to become Ray Charles. But it's not just Jamie Foxx. Jamie Dorman was involved in a TV show called The Fall, and he played a serial killer who would stalk women. Well, Jamie Dorman would dress in a certain manner that would remind him of a specific character. He would let his hair grow in a messy, greasy way and let himself become that character. He became so into that character, so in the zone, that while he was method acting, he actually stalked a woman on the London Underground, on the tube, on the train. He started to follow a woman home. And he followed her for a period of time. And then he said, wow, what am I doing? This is crazy. But I wanted to feel the rush of following someone. Think about how much, quite creepy if you ask me, to get into the zone of a serial killer that much that you start following a woman home. That's mad. But the point is, he got into that zone by changing the way he looked. Changing his hair, changing his attire, and slowly growing into that character. Christian Bale, 
in the movie The Machinist, he lost ridiculous amounts of weight in order to get into the role of the character. He dropped to 122 pounds for the film. And as you can see, he was looking like he was practically a corpse. Again, by losing that weight, he was able to become who he felt he needed to become. But even when it's not changing your look dramatically in terms of your physical structure, and it's just about changing certain elements of yourself. Al Pacino, when he played the movie Serpico, who was almost like a hippie type cop, and he was very different to other sort of cops of the era. They didn't trust him because he was not taking uh, any bribes or any envelopes under the table, so to speak, clean cut guy. But he was also a bit of a hippie, and so other police officers didn't trust him. And so what did he do to grow into that character? He grew a beard. He grew this big hair. He started to live the lifestyle of how he imagined his character living. And what did he do? He was so in character during the movie Serpico that while he was driving home from set, so he's a regular Joe, he's an actor, he's not a real police officer, he pulled over a truck because it had a broken tail light and he tried to give the man a ticket. That's how much in role he was. That's where his attire managed to take him. Tamir Hassan. He was in a movie called The Business, which became a bit of a cult classic here in the UK. Uh, it was a low budget movie. He only got paid 15 grand for it, he says. He did an interview with James English. And he was saying that when he was over there, he had to get into character. He had to get into the guy that he was, Charlie. So that 15 grand that he earned, he didn't actually manage to keep a penny of it. He spent it all while living in Spain, living the high life, trying to be Charlie. And he said they had these 1980s clothes and he was saying, yeah, listen, you got the gear, the Pierre Cardin shirts, and it was horrific. It was horrendous, he said. But when you'd put it on, oh, mate, we thought we was the bollocks because you get in it and you think, oh, man, I'm here. I'm in the 80s. This is I'm in the zone. I'm that guy now. I'm the man. So you look at it from the modern perspective and it was so out of fashion. But once you've put it on, you get into that zone, you become that guy. And he became so much into it that at one point, towards the end of filming, the wives came over and he said, my wife was there and we were all on a night out. And she was going, Tam, Tam, Tam. And I weren't looking up, I weren't responding, it weren't even registering. And then one of the boys said to her, call him Charlie. She went, Charlie. He went, what babe? And that's how much he was into it. He became Charlie, all because he had to get into the right mindset for it, the right mentality, and it started off with the clothing, with the slick back hair, the sunshades, everything else, the jewelry, the mannerisms, the idiosyncrasies. He's able to brainwash himself into becoming something else. And that's part of the process, perhaps, that both Anthony Joshua and Alexander Usyk are trying to put themselves through. And so considering at the weigh-in, we didn't see anything truly sensational or dramatic, except potentially the comments of Robert Garcia tonight. So instead of focusing on that, I wanted to focus a little bit on what they seem to be doing psychologically, how they seem to be trying to tap in into the past, much like method actors, in order to get into a zone of war, a zone of destruction. And perhaps Anthony Joshua needs it a lot more than Alexander Usyk. Let me know what you think, ladies and gents, about what we've chatted about tonight. Thank you for watching. I also want to thank Ultra Tech, who had me on his channel tonight you can find it on youtube we spoke about a whole bunch of things an hour-long episode on his youtube channel uh, everything was regarding this fight the preparation psychology we spoke technical elements really enjoyable thank you so much for having me on you can also find him on twitter at ultras podcast so thank you to him and thank you to you guys for tuning in chat to you soon please don't forget to hit a stiff jab on the like button a right cross on the subscribe button and an uppercut on the notifications button take care god bless